DiscerningHearts.com presents Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors. I'm your host, Chris McGregor, and I am delighted to be joined once again by Kathleen Beckman, who is the president of the Foundation of Prayer for Priests. She has served the church for 25 years as an international Catholic evangelist, author, Ignatian retreat director, and radio host, and is often featured on EWTN TV and radio. For over a decade, Kathleen has served on the diocesan exorcist team and is the administrator of her diocese exorcism and deliverance ministry. She completed the Association of International Exorcists Rome course, Exorcism and Prayers of Liberation. She sits on the advisory boards of the Pope Leo XIII Institute and Magnificat, a ministry to Catholic women. She is the author of three books, Praying for Priests, God's Healing Mercy, and When Women Pray. With Kathleen Beckman, we go inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing, published by Sophia Institute Press. Kathleen, thank you so much for joining me once again. Well, thank you, Chris. I'm delighted to be with you. I am so glad that you agreed to come back to do something special that we haven't done on Inside the Pages before, and has had somebody come back to talk again about one of the books, because right after we spoke, uh, an, an extraordinary occurrence happened. The Holy Father declared on December 8, 2020, the year of St. Joseph. And St. Joseph is so important and so prominent in your work and in this book that it would be a tragedy not to <laughs> come back and take a look at what you did in, in the book with St. Joseph and, of course, the Blessed Mother. I don't think we emphasized it enough in the short time we had before. So thank you for coming back to talk about this extraordinary gift of the Holy Family. Yes, and I think it's, it's very important because, you know, first of all, we have to consider how often do we make an intentional effort to imitate the Holy Family? Mm -hmm. Now, that said, that is a high ideal, isn't it? And I'm sure that most of us feel like it's impossible and we fall far short of that ideal, but it isn't impossible. You know, the Holy Family, that Jesus came to the world, born, he was born into a human family. He had a mother and a father, the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, and that he lived with them for 30 years in hiddenness. It's remarkable. And it speaks to the importance of the domestic church, of, of the family life. And so we can look, we must continue to look at Mary and St. Joseph and the Lord Jesus, especially the child Jesus. There's so much to learn from the child Jesus. So when we look at them uh, as our models, we realize that, you know what, this is the way the Lord intends for us to be in, in our families. And that is a life of prayer, a life of joy, a life of service, a life of um, caring for one another and of doing the Father's will. It is possible for us to do that by the grace of God. And so we mustn't be discouraged in families. And I know we all have family issues, if you will. We must keep our eyes on that holy family and learn from them because they model for us the ideal of family life, which is meant to be uh, valiant and virtuous. And it's possible to, to be that way by God's grace. I have been shouting from the rooftops how this is the one. Everyone has been waiting for the best way to understand and to actually deal with issues that assault us every day in the heart of our family, but also in the heart of individuals. And I think you have brought it forward with this work. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It was really... Um born out of necessity because I, I realized in working in the Ministry of Healing, Deliverance, and Exorcism for, what, 15 years and serving on the exorcist team, you know, you, you see the history uh, behind each individual and how often um, the root of the problem, you know, uh, is 
in the what happened to a person in their family life. That's not to blame parents or you know family situations, um, but still, you know, are those formative years, whether we're in college or high school or grade school, um, a lot happens to us then, and God wants us to be set free and really uh, come into the fullness of the joy of the Lord. And so thanks be to God, he has empowered us um, with gifts and graces to um, proclaim his victory and to be victorious over anything that is holding us back from true liberation. Mm. Well, Kathleen, just from the title of your book, it's a family guide to spiritual warfare. And the reason why the family needs to have this the shining star right now is because that is exactly where the enemy is going on his um, on his assault today it's right into the very heart of the family oh absolutely and actually i start out the book with the quote i think is very powerful from pope francis in which he says he reminds us that the family families are the domestic church well what happens there it's where jesus grows he grows in the love of spouses. He grows in the lives of children. That is why the enemy so often attacks the family, because the devil doesn't want the family. Therefore, he will try to destroy it to make sure what that there is no love there. And so may the, you know, the Holy Father says, may the Lord bless families and strengthen them in this time of crisis when the devil is seeking to destroy them. And I think, you know, we need to take to heart that message and and refocus, if you will, on what is going on in our families, because God has uh, is doing a mighty work in our families, and um, He wants to use each and every one of us to help protect and to provide um, a really loving environment in the domestic church. Yeah, I don't think we can overstate the importance of the family. Actually, in the heart of Catholic social doctrine. That is a key unit for our Christian witness to all of society. How we love one another within the family is to be a model for others to witness and to be drawn to. And if you blow that up, if that can be destroyed, then society, cultures begin to crumble and are ultimately destroyed, aren't they? Absolutely. You, you spoke that so beautifully, Chris. And this is what the enemy is trying to do in a very intentional, methodical way. And that's why we need to pray to the Holy Spirit for that spirit of wisdom from on high so that we can have the spiritual sensitivity, the spiritual discernment to know how to combat uh, what the enemy is coming, uh, how he comes against our marriages and how he tries to divide us from our families. So the beauty is going back to the Holy Family is it's remarkable that they were so ordinary. Mm -hmm. Really, they, they lived a very ordinary life and they remained unknown for 30 years. You know, that's, that's a call to humility. It's a call to service and a hiddenness. Um, it's hard for us to relate in this world that we live in now with social media and television and everything. But the Holy Family, they were so ordinary, as I say in the book, that they were they were willing to be unknown and hidden for 30 years. And they were so humble that they were content to be hidden and unknown. And then they grew in love, scripture tells us, through what? Obedience to the Father and service to one another. So always, you know, praying in our families for the Father's will. Um, and they prayed together, they worked together, they honored one another, they made a home. And you know, we are called to make a home and create a loving sanctuary of peace in the domestic church. So this exalted beauty of the Holy Family is something that God wills for our families. And it's a work that is worthy of our effort and worthy to um, strive for. You know, what I love what you've done in A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, particularly in referencing St. Joseph, in some uh, instructions on spiritual warfare in the past, and it's not a, uh, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that they were lacking. I think there is always a holy, pious intention of heart. We're trying to get the material out there, but right. there will be descriptions 
that you should turn to St. Joseph. And yes, he is the terror of demons. There is a, a, the beautiful litany that you even put in the book of the titles of St. Joseph. But yet, it's one thing to go to him as a resource in the battle. It's another thing to help people learn to become like that resource, to emulate what St. Joseph is. So it's not just St. Joseph over there, but it's St. Joseph. In, in some ways, you're taking on that virtuous nature and emulating St. Joseph so that it's that power to be able to vanquish the demon is something that is very organic to the Christian and can be accomplished so fully, but in virtue. Am I, am I overstating that, Kathleen? No, you are not, because, you know, the church has said that St. Joseph is the terror of demons. And I can say from experience that during the rite of exorcism, he is a terror to demons. And they, uh, they react very strongly to the name of St. Joseph. And in the book, I quote Father Donald Calloway in his book on St. Joseph. And I also quote uh, Bishop Thomas Olmsted, who's written a great deal encouraging men to emulate uh, St. Joseph. So, you know, the last thing the devil wants is for men to be apparitions of St. Joseph, but that is that they increase the presence of St. Joseph. So this is precisely what we need in the world today and what the family needs is the presence of St. Joseph, the father, the protector, you know, the one willing to to serve and to be humble, uh, to be virtuous, and to bring forth the fruitfulness that God the Father has ordained for our families and by extension for the whole world. So this is a real call out. And in the book, I speak a lot about this, about St. Joseph. There's prayers uh, and litanies, as you mentioned, to St. Joseph. But I also quoted um, some beautiful text from Bishop Olmsted and about the attack on father and in the reflection is called where is my daddy Mm. and you know it's like this is the cry of so many people today so many young people where's where is my father where is my daddy where did where has he gone and he left us or I don't know him you know and um, so there's a reflection on that and so it's a call to men to really take Saint Joseph um, and really you know, commune with him in prayer and ask him to help you to have the virtues of his paternal heart. And so this is a real spiritual dynamic and it will empower men um, to be, uh, have a great spiritual authority in their households. We'll return to Inside the Pages in just a moment. Did you know that Discerning Hearts has a free app in which you can find all your favorite Discerning Hearts programming? Father Timothy Gallagher, Dr. Anthony Lillis, Deacon James Keating, Mike Aquilina, Dr. Matthew Bunsen, and so many more are found on the Discerning Hearts free app. Did you also know that you can stream Discerning Hearts programming on numerous streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Tune in, and so many more. And did you know that Discerning Hearts also has the YouTube page? Be sure to check out all these different places where you can find Discerning Hearts. A Prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malignant enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee, forever and ever. Amen. Hello, my name is Deacon Omar Gutierrez, and I want to ask you to support Discerning Hearts in a special way. 
We, Chris McGregor, the board, and I all know that not everyone listening can help financially. We know we have listeners from all parts of the world, and we have made a commitment since the beginning to make the truths shared through Discerning Hearts totally free. So while you may not be able to contribute financially, what you can do is certainly pray, but also give us positive reviews on whatever platform you use to listen to us. If it's iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, however it is that you get these podcasts, or if you're on YouTube and you like our videos, please give us a good rating and write a review. The more good ratings and reviews we get, the higher our profile, and the more listeners will discover us, listeners who may have the means to contribute in the future. Please consider rating us and writing a positive review today. We now return to Inside the Pages. It's important, isn't it, Kathleen, to realize that in this area of spiritual warfare, this combat comes about in a very real way because doors are opened. That is a term that exorcists learn <laughs> and people who are right. in deliverance ministry, that there a door has been opened where the enemy can come in. And so often it comes in at the very beginning of our lives and our childhoods because there wasn't a St. Joseph there. In sorrow, sometimes the Marian presence isn't there. And, and how do we know what those presents are? It's the mother and the father. Something has happened. Something broke in the heart of someone, and they could not be that Joseph for a family. And unfortunately, you know, things come in and cause those, those wounds. And that's why it's important to go back and look at the source of those wounds and then call upon those who can help shut those doors. Absolutely. And wounds... Um... I'm glad that you mentioned that because, um, you know, one of the exorcists, one of the foremost exorcists known in America, he, he once gave a conference and said, look, wounds becomes an open door, a portal, especially if I perceive my identity that, in that wound. Mm -hmm. If I live in that wound, then an evil spirit can live in that wound. Therefore, we have to acknowledge um, that there is a wound like I had a wound after my father-in-law was murdered and I witnessed that it was a very deep wound. And that's when I, I know in prayer, I felt prompted by the Holy spirit to take great care to heal this wound of unforgiveness and of anger and of losing faith that there was goodness in men because somebody could murder someone else. Um, then I had to take care to be healed of that wound and what motivated me was the inspiration in prayer that said, take care to heal your wounds so that you don't impose it upon my body, the church. And that's what happens with wounds. So the good news is that we do not equal our wounds. That's not who I am. I have a wound, but I can invite the Lord Jesus Christ into that wound and he can heal me of that wound. And that wound ends up serving to God's glory because it has made me that much more compassionate. It has uh, caused me to exercise forgiveness and to go deeper into that. So it's important, you know, when a person who may be listening to this, uh, you know, when you hear the word wound, understand that that's not your identity. If you've been wounded, then take care to seek the healing and deliverance from that wound. Don't live in there. Uh, don't accept that wound as your uh, place of being because God will use that wound uh, as he does his own holy wounds um, to bring about a resurrection in you. So, you know, there's um, that is one of the five portals, which there's the sin portal, the wound portal, the inheritance um, contracts and how the demons can choose you. So those are the five portals. Now, <clears throat> getting back to imitating the Holy Family and Saint Joseph, you know, if we can, if we can live in the mantle of a protection of Mary and in the cloak of Saint Joseph, um, if we can turn to them immediately for every help that we need, spiritual and temporal. They will be there to help us to fulfill the Father's will within the domestic church. Yeah, I'm so glad you said it that way, Kathleen, because the thing is, as those who are listening out there, maybe you're a mother now, you're a, you're a father, or even a grandmother or, or grandfather, the, the point is that in your own family, if you 
feel that there was a wound that has hurt you, maybe the your relationship with your mother or the relationship with your father, you can turn to this gift of the Holy Family, of a real, a, a, you know, a presence. We believe that this is true, that in the communion of saints, St. Joseph can come to you and help you in that woundedness of the lack of a father for male or female. And the same can be said for Mary, again, whether you're a male or a female. And that's the beauty of the Holy Family. They can come and love you in, in the circumstances you find yourself in and help you to experience what you should have experienced. Yes, you're absolutely right. And, and that's what I am doing retreat work and, and in ministry for deliverance, you know, often we hear that there is someone in a family that has done a very terrible thing to another family member. We acknowledge that, but the person, there's a, a one family member can do very powerful and wonderful things to overcome that. And so, you know, there's a, um, a great hope if we will engage with and with the help of Mary and St. Joseph to, to extend that virtue and to be instruments of healing for one another. And this takes really an int intentional awareness of who am I turning to when I am tempted or when I am distraught, um, when I'm not in a good place, where do I turn? Am I turning away? Or am I turning to Jesus, to St. Joseph, and to Mother Mary? Because they will come and they will be present to us. And I, and I think that they are, whether we have devotion to them or not. I think that by God's design that they are present. They are right there. Uh, they care about each and every family. And they're wanting to help. And so that invitation to come, come into my family St. Joseph, you know, and, and pray like spouses pray, you know, I have prayed for my husband to really walk in the virtues of St. Joseph and that I may walk in the virtues of mother Mary, you know, these are real spiritual dynamic realities. And so as long as we can pray for them and turn to them, to the Holy family, um, I think that it will serve our families very, very well. What's remarkable about the book, A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Kathleen, is that you had such great information in the beginning of the book on the reality of spiritual warfare. But then there's also this really packed section in the back of the book. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like my, my poor book is so broken. The spine is broken. It's all because I keep going through it. And I think, oh, this, is, this, this could be a book in its own. But you spoke about so beautifully in chapter 10 about the Virgin Mary and the angels in spiritual combat. And of course, you know, right by her is Joseph. I mean, it's, um, but he's so quiet that he's just, he's, he's just present. He, he's so grounded in who he is that I mean, it's, it, it's such an, uh, an incredible example of humility, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned about the placement of I, I saved, like in my mind, my one of my favorite chapters is chapter 10, the Virgin Mary and the angels in spiritual combat. And you have to get to the back of the book to, to find that, that gem. Um, but, it, you know, so I encourage people to persevere. It is a longer book, but uh, I, I, the real treasure, I think, is, it, um, well, there's a lot of treasures, I think, in the book, mm -hmm. hopefully. But um, I think the chapter 10 is really packed with beautiful insight about the Holy Family and Mother Mary and the angelic world. Um, and I do want to mention in the book, Chris, also the appendices. Some readers tend to not look at an appendix, but the two appendices, I think, are very vital because the first one, there's, um, what, 40 pages of prayers mm -hmm. that have the imprimatur and Nihil Obstat, and several of them uh, relate to Mary and to St. Joseph and the Holy Family. And then the second appendices, um, appendix uh, relates to real uh, case studies, not to sound too, too um, technical, but, uh, you know, you get to read about other family situations and how they came to the church for healing and deliverance, and then they were victorious, what their journey was like. And that's a very helpful tool. So yes, um, getting back to chapter 10 with 
with Our Lady and the Rosary and, um, you know, always St. Joseph, um, we know that it's very providential that the Holy Father has proclaimed next year as the year of St. Joseph. There's a great need, as we said before, for the spirit of St. Joseph to, to be present in the world today, um, in our men, in our sons, in our husbands, and in our parishes, um, and in our families. So imagine the, the powerhouse of uh, prayer now as we kind of the whole universal church looks to St. Joseph and pleads with St. Joseph to come, St. Joseph, and walk among us again with your virtues, with your paternal charity, as the terror of demons, you know, help us men and women and families especially to proclaim Christ's victory, to, to push back the darkness and to spread the light, um, which is something that St. Joseph is so uh, good at doing and so willing to help us with. Well, and and I know you carry this sentiment in your heart as well, the, that in all reverence, we know that there are many families out there that uh, because of circumstances of our society and culture and who knows what's going on in the heart of that family, that there may not be a male presence. There may not be a female presence. Again, in all reverence, we don't know that, that everyone's individual story, but there may be in that broken family, they can turn to St. Joseph as well. I'm thinking of Teresa of Avila, who would say, go to St. Joseph, you got a problem. You know, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. an answer. He's a real remedy for many who may need that particular figure. Absolutely. And, you know, I know from my own personal experience, when we invoke saints, that they very much are um, at the ready to help us. And uh, we experience, um, you know, their presence and their grace and their help. We, we just do. It's very, it's very real. It's part of our faith tradition um, to turn to the saints as intercessors um, and as protectors. And so I'm delighted that we can look to St. Joseph and have always, you know, with Mary, but look at what he did, you know, just the act of faith, um, you know, just the hearing of God's voice, you know, and, and discerning what he was going to do with Mary, if you will, and how, you know, he was obedient to, it's, there's so many lessons that we can learn from St. Joseph. He was obedient to what he'd uh, experienced in that dream. And he took her and he protected the Christ child. He protected Our Lady. This is very much what the family needs. And so you mentioned single family households and, you know, it is a deprivation, but God provides a provision for that. And that provision is that he will extend to us his own uh, St. Joseph's care and Mother Mary's care when we're deprived of that physical presence, we can have that spiritual presence that is there. And it becomes very tangible, Chris, as you know, in the spiritual life. Um, It it requires prayer. It requires um, communing with the Lord Jesus Christ. It requires an act of faith. It requires an act of the will an intentionality toward, I want to have a friendship with St. Joseph. I want to have a friendship and relationship with Mother Mary. I need their help. I can't do this alone. God is so pleased to honor our desires like that, our prayers like that. And it's, it's surprisingly beautiful how he does it. We'll continue our conversation in our next episode. With Kathleen Beckman, we've gone inside the pages of A Family Guide to Spiritual Warfare, Strategies for Deliverance and Healing. To learn more about this book or to obtain a copy, go to sophiainstitute.com. The website for its publisher, Sophia Institute Press. Or you can find it at any fine Catholic bookstore. To hear and or to download this conversation, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, 
And if you feel us worthy, consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax deductible to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope that you will tell a friend about discerninghearts.com and join us next time for Inside the Pages, insights from today's most compelling authors.